Robin. Hi. What exactly is it I'm supposed to say here? Kyle? Me? Kyle, as you know, you're not feeling well. So I'm going to talk about the stuff you wanted to talk about as it relates to deduction games, mostly. Based on your notes, the game that you wanted to talk about was Spyfall. So I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Spyfall by Alexander Ushin is a three to eight player deduction game with some elements of bluffing. Everyone assigned a role at a location, except of course the spy who doesn't have a role. He or she is trying to figure out where everybody is. The not spies are trying to figure out who the spy is in order to identify the spy, but also in order to identify the location, you're gonna ask questions. Questions might be if you're in the space station, what is our daily uniform here? How's the temperature outside? It is really freaking cold and windy outside. So you're trying to ask questions that demonstrate that you know what the location is, but doesn't give too much away for the spy. The rounds are timed, not lasting more than 15 minutes. If the spy thinks he knows the location, he says, hey, Hey, I'm the spy everybody we're in the space station if the not spies think they know who the spy is they're like hey I bet Kyle's a spy if he is a spy then he's like yeah you got me if he's not a spy then Robin's like <laughs> suckers it was me. and then the spy gets a point otherwise if time runs out then nobody gets a point this is a game that's supposed to work by winning with the most points but I don't really know that it's essential to play with points for this game. Which kind of brings me to your point, Kyle, about when does a deduction game become a party game? And sort of links back to a question that I asked last week, how does bluffing enhance or take away from a deduction game? So I'm going to slip into teacher mode here. <coughs> According to the definitive source on such topics, the Board Game Geek website defines deduction games thusly. Deduction games are those that require players to form conclusions based on available premises. These games are quite varied, including several different types of logical reasoning. Hmm. There are various types of deduction games. Cat and mouse games, like Scotland Yard, Fury of Dracula, Letters of Whitechapel, are a type of deduction game in which players use a set of observations and truthful feedback to narrow down possibilities and catch a constantly moving opponent at the right position. Elimination games, like Clue, expect players to arrive at the right conclusion after narrowing down possibilities from a large list. Signaling games, like Werewolf, allow for a set of observations and player-driven feedback, which may not be truthful, to arrive at the conclusion of two to three main choices. You're the werewolf, you're the werewolf, and you're the minion, or whatever. On the opposite end of that spectrum, I guess, are um, induction games like Zendo, which I've never played and probably wouldn't be any better at than deduction games. But anyway, in those types of games, players are trying to guess a general rule out of an infinite number of possibilities, which is why I wouldn't be good at that. Social deduction games. Those are going to be games that involve both bluffing and hidden roles, like One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which Robin, I believe, is talking about next week. So if you want to learn about that game, tune in to watch him. Now, Kyle, I think this is kind of cheating because I'm answering your question in this video and not in the round table discussion that we're going to have after Robin's video. But here we are, so I'm just going to roll with it. I think adding that freedom to bluff is where we get into the party game territory or as the geek likes to refer to them, the social deduction games, which I actually think I like better because I do think there is a difference. Once you allow for elements that aren't explicitly explained in the rules, that aren't concrete and definitive, that's when you start entering the social side of the spectrum. I don't think that's bad. I quite like games that purposefully include bluffing. That being said, imagine adding bluffing to a game like Mysterium. Uh, where the whole point is to solve the murder mystery. Oh yeah, of course, that that's, that's the location. You betcha. Or yeah, probably a better example. That's the guy that I am trying to tell you about. No, it's not. Because then you'd be screwed at the end if you got, everybody got to the end. You're like, well, let's solve the mystery. And then it's like, ha ha ha. I was just kidding about who I assigned to you, so. I think that's where that second part of the social deductions game definition comes in. 
that you need the hidden rolls. That's where the flexibility is gonna come in and not ruin the overall experience of the game for people, which is obviously very important. Of course, even within those games, there are usually variable player powers that kind of limit what people can do to still try to control the experience somewhat. Otherwise, and thankfully I have never ever been like party to this mess, but you know, you got like the seven hour werewolf games and I, 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 I don't wanna play that. I just don't. Well, I can't at all imagine that making a deduction game of any sort is easy. Take for example, Guess Who? A game most Americans probably spent their childhood playing or at least knew about growing up. I don't know if you're aware of this, Kyle and Robin and everybody else, but there is actually a super rare Euro edition of Guess Who? Isn't that always the case with Euro games? It's the Dudes on Boxes edition. It's, and, and it's rare, and this is interesting, because, well, it had some difficulties, we'll say, playtesting. And because of the miracle of the internet, I was actually able to find out some of that footage from the early playtesting sessions of the Guess Who Dudes on Boxes board game edition. Let's check it out. Is your person white? Yes? Okay. Um, does your guy wear a hat? Bye, 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 oh, bye. Forgot you. Does your person have facial hair? Ha <laughs> ha, two. Does your guy look slightly grumpy? Hmm, too subjective? Eh, you're right, they all kind of look grumpy. Does your guy have dark hair? Got another one. Does your guy have a beard? A full beard? Is your guy got any fancy things around his neck? Bye-bye. Does he look to the left? My left, not his left. Stage left, stage right. Does his hat have a big brim? No. <laughs> well, see, so there were some problems with that early edition there. So I don't know if there are any questions in particular that you had for people, Kyle. Um, maybe you could throw those up in the guild if there were. I feel like there probably was. My question to you, sir, is it is really freaking cold and windy out here. I sure hope you're happy. That really isn't a question. It's more of a statement slash threat. Oh, congratulations. Speaking of deduction games, Robin has a kind of deduction game that Rado, I guess, has called a Hanabi killer. I'm going to link to that below so you guys can check that out. I'm not afraid of shameless self-promotions. Feel free to talk about that next week, Robin, if you would like.